Hey guys, what is going on? This is WrestleMania, back with another episode. It's the end of an era as the icon Sting wrestles his last match. Can the Stinger remain undefeated in AEW? That's just the start as AEW presents 11 matches, including 6 sensational championship matches. Join us now as WrestleMania recaps AEW Revolution and looks at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Starting with the Zero Hour Pre-Show. 12-man tag team match. The Bang Bang Scissor Gang, Max Caster, Anthony Bowens, Billy Gunn, Austin Gunn, Colton Gunn, and Jay White versus Jeff Jarrett, Satnam Singh, Jay Lethal, Willie Mack, and Private Party, Isaiah Cassidy, and Mark Quinn with Sanjay Dutt and Karen Jarrett. A well-placed match that sees the babyfaces try to deal with the monstrous Satnam Singh and succeed thanks to some slick teamwork. It's easy pickings after this as Jay White hits the switchblade on Willie Mack for the pinfall. Your winners, the Bang Bang Scissors Gang. Backstage, Orange Cassidy tells best friends he doesn't want them getting involved. A hype video airs for the return of Pac. Julia Hart and Sky Blue versus Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale with Stokely Hathaway. Good teamwork by both teams makes for an entertaining match. However, the sheer power of Willow Nightingale prevails as she powerbombs Sky Blue, getting the 1-2-3. Your winners, Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale. A hype video airs celebrating Sting's magnificent career. On the main show, the TNT Championship match, Christian Cage with Killswitch and Mother Wayne and the prodigy Nick Wayne defends against Daniel Garcia. Garcia keeps his head above water for much of the match, but the presence of the patriarchy catches up. Killswitch hits a choke slam while the referee is distracted by Christian's entourage. Mother Wayne distracts the referee again, and Nick Wayne clobbers Garcia, giving Christian an opening to hit the kill switch and get the Duke. Your winner, and still champion, Christian Cage. Respect match for the Triple Crown Championship. Eddie Kingston defends against Brian Danielson. If Danielson loses, he has to shake Kingston's hand. Danielson targets Kingston's wrist throughout the match. The American Dragon seemingly tries every strike and submission, but Kingston absorbs it all like a sponge before unloading with pure power, including a lariat and powerbomb for the pinfall victory. Your winner, and still champion, Eddie Kingston. After the match, Danielson teases he won't shake Kingston's hand, but he does, raising his arm and bowing before him. All-Star Scramble match winner gets a future AEW World Championship match. Chris Jericho vs. Wardlow vs. Powerhouse Hobbs vs. Lance Archer vs. Hook vs. Brian Cage vs. Magnus vs. Dante Martin. The big boys join forces and throw out four of their opponents before it's a pose down, followed by a battle of beef between Hobbs, Archer, Cage, and Wardlow. This match sees power versus speed as all eight competitors wear each other down until only Wardlow and Dante Martin remain. Unfortunately for Martin, his speed is no match for Wardlow, and the big man power bombs him to win. Your winner, Wardlow, who earns a future AEW World Championship match. International Championship match, Orange Cassidy defends against Roderick Strong. The story of this match is that Orange Cassidy is barely cleared to compete thanks to injured ribs, an injury Roderick Strong capitalizes on at every opportunity, which pays off when he hits the end of heartache and covers OC to become the new international champion. Your winner and new international champion, Roderick Strong. After the match, Mike Bennett and Matt Taven congratulate Strong. They are not alone as Kyle O'Reilly shows up, eventually hugging his old Undisputed Era partner, but refusing to take an Undisputed Kingdom t-shirt. O'Reilly whispers something in Strong's ear before he leaves. FTR, Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler versus the Blackpool Combat Club, John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli. A wild match that features classic tag team wrestling, Cash is isolated but makes the hot tag only for Dax to get busted open. Harwood's blood loss weakens him enough that when Moxley applies the rear naked choke, Dax doesn't have enough gas in the tank to escape and he passes out. Your winners, the Blackpool Combat Club, John Moxley, and Claudio Castagnoli. AEW Women's Championship match, Timeless Tony Storm with Mariah May and Luther defends against Deanna Perazzo. Tony Storm enters the ring in her old school outfit, only for Tony to be revealed as Mariah May. Perazzo doesn't dominate, but has the champion on the ropes. Deanna locks in the Fujiwara armbar and Storm taps, but referee Aubrey Edwards is distracted by Luther. Mariah May distracts Perazzo, and Storm recovers enough to hit Storm Zero for the win. Your winner, and still champion, Tony Storm. Will Ospreay vs. Kanosuke Takeshita 
This match is a showcase of moves guaranteed to shorten a wrestler's career, whether it's Poison Frankensteiners, Storm Blades, Styles Clashes, Avalanche Blockbusters, or any of the other moves that can turn a wrestler's spinal column into the end result of a game of Jenga. Somehow both men survive, but Osprey gets the W after hitting a Styles Clash and Storm Blade. Your winner, Will Osprey. After the match, Ring of Honor TV champion Kyle Fletcher enters the ring to hug his old friend. The two will tangle on this week's Dynamite. Triple threat match for the AEW World Championship, Samoa Joe defends against Hangman Adam Page and Swerve Strickland with Prince Nana. Back and forth as Swerve and Hangman are equally invested in destroying each other as winning the title. Swerve has Joe done for what looks like a three count, but Page drags the referee out of the ring. Hangman snaps and attacks Strickland with the title belt. An unhinged Hangman attacks the referee, creating complete chaos. Ultimately, Samoa Joe capitalizes, locking in the Coquina Clutch on Page, who taps out before a beaten down Swerve can stop him. Your winner, and still champion, Samoa Joe. A hype video airs for AEW's newest pay-per-view, Dynasty, airing on 21st April. Ric Flair makes his way to ringside and he's joined by wrestling legend Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. A hype video airs before the main event. Sting's classic entrance music plays as his sons emerge on the stage, one dressed like classic Sting and the other in late era Sting mode. Tornado Tag Team Rules match for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. Sting and Darby Allin with Ric Flair defend against the Young Bucks, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson. Sting and Darby attack the Bucks right off the bat, delivering multiple Stinger splashes. Sting's sons get in on the action too before leaving Papa Sting and Darby to continue. The Young Bucks isolate Sting and Darby, neutralizing Darby after putting him through a sheet of glass. Sting is in trouble as the Bucks double-team him. Ricky Steamboat tries to stop the Bucks from using the tag belt, but the Bucks take him out with a super kick party. Ric Flair enters the ring and plants himself on Sting's body, giving Sting time to recover as the Bucks knock Flair out of the ring. The Bucks continue pummeling Sting, but he continues getting up. Finally, Darby rejoins the match, turning the tide as Sting locks in the Scorpion Deathlock for the submission win. Your winners, and still AEW World Tag Team Champions, Sting and Darby Allin. The Good, a terrific 12-man match. Zero Hour kicked off with a terrific 12-man match that was action-packed and didn't break down into a mess like many AEW Tag Team matches do. Jeff Jarrett, Billy Gunn, and Jay Lethal showed why it's important to have veterans working amongst so many younger talent, lending experience and stability to the match. The Workhorse Championship Christian Cage has quickly turned the TNT Championship into the equivalent of the Intercontinental Championship during the 80s and early 90s, a title featuring some of wrestling's best workers that gives younger stars a chance to shine and work their way up the ladder. Captain Charisma vs. Daniel Garcia was a solid bout that should solidify Garcia's credentials as an upper card talent, while also making fans wonder how anyone can overcome the gauntlet Cage has surrounding him. Wrestling should be fun. Tonight's AEW All-Star Scramble match was a spot fest from start to finish, but to quote Diamond Dallas Page, that's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. The match was largely a showcase for AEW's big men and a reminder of how much they can bring to AEW if they're used effectively, which for the most part, they're not. This was a fun match and a reminder of the variety AEW brings to its pay-per-views. Some fun Sting throwbacks. Tonight's show wasn't all about Sting, but AEW made sure to honor the Stinger in many ways, including a lovely tribute video, as well as an appearance from announcer David Crockett, who worked with Sting in Jim Crockett Promotions. Ric Flair was in Sting's corner as expected, but it's doubtful anyone expected to see another legend from Sting's era, Ricky Steamboat. That wasn't all, as Moxley and Castagnoli wore Road Warrior spiked vests, a tribute to the legendary team that was, at times, Sting's friends, and at others, his most fearsome foes. Best of all, Jim Ross called Sting's final match the proverbial icing on the cake. The best of both worlds. FTR vs. Blackpool Combat Club was a tag team match that combined the best elements from yesterday's classic tag team matches, hope spots, good timing, crisp double team maneuvers and near falls, with the innovative moves of today's stars like Dax Harwood, Cash Wheeler, John Moxley, and Claudio Castagnoli. The match had just the right amount of near falls without being excessive and was a showcase for two of AEW's best teams. Don't be surprised to see these two teams competing for the AEW World Tag Team Championship in the near future. Don does it again. Is Don Callis the best manager in wrestling? It's difficult to think of someone who is as good of a mouthpiece and knows how to irritate fans just enough without making them reach for the remote. 
Callis called the action during the Osprey vs. Takeshita match, explaining why two of his wrestlers are fighting, telling the fans they should be thanking him for giving them a match of the decade and doing what he does best, being an all-around jerk. We promise it'll get better. Fans had to wonder if AEW's announce crew was sending a coded message that the promotion knows its women's division is pretty lousy, but that things will improve. How else to interpret the comments that the women's division was improving with Deanna Perrazzo joining AEW and Tony Storm having to up her game? While AEW's women's division does need a lot of work, the two matches on tonight's show were entertaining. Equally important, they lack the usual bevy of blundered spots fans have come to expect and dread. A Proper Send-Off AEW did an exemplary job giving Sting a proper send-off, beginning with a heart-wrenching pre-match tribute video that celebrated Sting's career and bypassed the problem of the WWE owning most footage involving Sting by featuring footage from Japan and a collage of photographs. Of course, fans didn't drop $49.95 for a video, and the match they saw between the Bucks and the champions featured Sting and Darby fighting to get revenge on the Bucks. Things looked bleak for much of the match, and AEW did a fantastic job keeping fans on the edge of their seats until the very end. The Bad Powerbomb Powerbomb AEW went a bit overboard with the powerbomb finishes. The first five matches had powerbomb finishes. Not very imaginative, especially for a pay-per-view. The only upside is at least they weren't roll-ups. The Accidental Champion Roderick Strong's international championship win had all the excitement of a team winning the Super Bowl by default after their opponents were sidelined with the flu. It's bad enough that Strong hasn't been built up as much of a challenger, but even worse, that the announcers kept pointing out how beat up the champion was, and all but saying anyone, including Tony Schiavone, could have defeated the broken down champion. Not exactly the best start for a new champion. The Downright Ugly Another example of what AEW does best, pay-per-view. AEW has yet to put on a bad pay-per-view, which makes it puzzling why its weekly TV is hit and miss. Well guys, there you have it, WrestleMania's look at AEW Revolution and our exclusive analysis of the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. What did you think of the show? Be sure to leave your comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and X, and we'll see you next time for some more wrestling content.